Planet Earth 2, episode 5, is about the grasslands. And this episode opens up in an unusual grassland that did feature in Planet Earth, and that is the grasslands of India, which are dominated by elephant grass, which is this really tall grass. It's called elephant grass because it's as tall as elephants, unsurprisingly. Uh, and here we just kind of get snippets of different animals through there. You know, we see elephants, we see tigers, uh, rhinos, you know. It's, it's alright, it's a good way to start in the episode, I think. Um, we don't get a huge amount of time there, but it's nice just to show the, the extremes that grass can, can grow to, really. Uh, from there we move uh, to the Eurasian steppe, where we see Saiga, uh, an animal that at this time wasn't very well filmed. The only time I'd seen Saiga was in uh, Walking with Beasts. Um, you just kind of see them just, you know, milling around in the grassland. The calves are already uh, primed for, you know, being able to travel long distances in the grasslands, uh, which is, you know, kind of a skill that all large herbivores in the grasslands need to have, like wildebeest, caribou, they're the same. Uh, and it's an interesting sequence again. Um, I think we get more of the saga in Planet Earth 3 than we did here, but it's an interesting uh, just to see them. I think it was interesting that this whole uh, herd of uh, saga apparently died after this was filmed, like apparently they were just wiped out by some disease or something. Um, I think it was, I remember reading it at the time, which is, you know, pretty bleak to be honest. From there we move on to another uh, Planet Earth hotspot and that is the Okavango Delta. Here we see lions. Now the lions are struggling to catch stuff because the whole place is flooded so they have to tackle buffalo. Now uh, for a while up to this point I've been looking to see like a really good lion versus buffalo fight. Um, we, we had one in the hunt but it wasn't it wasn't that great I didn't think. This one though is easily the best lion and buffalo sequence I've ever seen. It's amazing. It really is like bare knuckle stuff. I mean, I mentioned the last video about the Mustangs, that being pretty brutal. This is easily the most violent sequence in this whole series. It's just, it's amazing. Uh, the, the lions are tearing into the buffalo. I mean, it's quite gory. There's a lot of blood. I was actually shocked people uh, didn't complain about it at the time, considering the, the, the iguanas and the racer snakes and the snow leopards both caused a bit of controversy. It was a really good sequence. It, it's the best one uh, that time for me. The buffalo does get away, you know. Lions in this series just don't seem to, they can't catch anything in the series, you know, what are they like? It's the closest we kind of get to seeing a realistic hunt, I think. Most of the time we, we shy away from the, you know, the gory or details of it, which is fair enough because most people don't want to watch them. Um, but I did think, I had respect for them, just for having the balls to have it in there. Uh, yeah, it was a really good sequence. I think the highlight of the episode. From there we move on to what I assume is the English countryside. It's definitely Europe. And here we see harvest mice or specifically a harvest mouse. A harvest mouse is just kind of milling around through the fields, you know, just just going through the grass looking for food. And it's a really good sequence. Again, it does a really good job of getting you right in the mouse's perspective. Like, the mouse feels like, it kind of is portrayed kind of like a monkey. The way you see monkeys travel through the canopy of the rainforest, it, that's how they kind of filmed the harvest mouse here, which I thought was really clever. You got inside its worldview, I felt. I think that just was a really good way of filming it. And likewise, when the barn owl comes along, uh, the barrel looked massive. It just it reminded me a little bit of the the dragons in Game of Thrones. I was like, that's just that's just huge compared to the this poor little mouse. And the mouse manages, manages to get away. It's very obvious that the the barn owl hunting and the harvest mouse escaping is is from two different sequences. It it serves the narrative purpose, and I really liked it. Um, yeah, it was really nice seeing the harvest mouse. I I I didn't expect it to be a highlight of the episode, but to be honest, after the lions, it probably is the be second best part for me. And from there we see bee eaters, carmine bee eaters, and the African savannah. And they're an animal I hadn't seen before. I I heard of. I didn't you know know anything about them. I knew they caught insects because of the name more than anything else. And you just see them uh, you know just bouncing from one creature to the other. They just want to ride. You know they use bustards, ostriches, elephants, uh, to varying degrees of success. And it's kind of a funny sequence. Um, but yeah, it's it's fine. It's a nice little bit. It doesn't really blow you away, but it's it's all right. Uh, then we see the serval. The serval is another animal in the African savanna. Uh, and this was kind of teased a lot in the trailer. There was quite a few shots to just following the serval growing through the grassland. So I had kind of more expectations for this bit. You see the serval trying to catch this rat and it's like a, almost like a Tom and Jerry thing, you know, it's trying to catch the rat, the rat's getting away. But no, I, I, I thought it was alright. I wasn't like blown away by it at all, which is a bit disappointing because I was a bit more hyped for it. I, again, serval's another animal you don't see too often and they are pretty cool because they're very different from a lot of other cats. Yeah, especially the bigger cats that we usually see, they, they hunt in a very different way. Uh, but yeah, it was fine. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't love it. After that, we see widow birds again. I think also in the African savanna. There's a lot of African savanna in this episode. 
we do move away at a point, but we do see a lot here. And again, I, I'd seen them before, they do the thing where they just jump up and down, you know, to uh, just attract mates. But again, another bit where I thought, this is alright. I wasn't blown away by it though. It was just, it was fine. Again, I'd seen it before, but it was nice seeing it here, I guess. From there, we move on to ants. So we talk about uh, grass cutter ants, and we just see the grass cutter ants, you know, they, they, they trim, they strip the the ground of its grass and then feed it to their fungus, which they in the I had seen that before in life, and I think other series, uh, grass cutter ants are not as heavily featured as leaf cutter ants by any means, but they do feature quite a bit. Uh, we also talked about termites, the way they talked about their, their homes and how they face a certain direction in the sun and everything. That was really cool. Uh, the bit about the termites that did bother me though um, was the reusing of footage. So we see a giant anteater tearing into the termite mound, which is cool. Hey, I like giant anteaters. We don't see them too often and they, they don't really do much apart from eat termites, so the opportunities to see them do something interesting are sort of minimal. And what bothered me was that the this uses footage from Life of Mammals, which came out in 2002. Not so much the close-ups of the anteaters, the anteater eating the, the, the termites and its tongue going in, that's all from this series, but the shots of it just breaking out of the termite mound, eh, it bothered me a bit. You're probably thinking, you're just being pedantic, eh, but no, the, the issue I have with it is that the series Life of Mammals, as it came out in 2002, was before high definition filmmaking eh, was a thing, so it's so obvious to me that there's a, there's a difference in the, the actual ratio it's filmed in, like between standard def and high def. It, it, the contrast so much for me. Like I don't know anyone else that complains about it, but I think just it just stands out so much to me. Uh, from there, we move further north, away from the the sunny grasslands, into a, what was you know barely grassland. It's just snow in the the far north, and we see bison are just trying to get to the grass. They're having to tunnel through the snow. They're not having a good time. They're like twenty degrees colder than they're, they're adapted to be, which is never ideal. And we see a fox as well, a red fox again. Red foxes. We see them all the time, well, in Britain anyway, I see foxes semi-regularly, but uh, you don't see them in these programmes very often. Maybe because they're like too familiar and they're not as exciting to the British audience, but I think they were pretty cool. And again, we see it jumping into the uh, snow head first to catch the mice. And it's really cool, you can see it sensing where the mice are moving and everything, and that's quite cool. It's always funny looking at the bison as well, when they watch the fox get the mouse, and they're just like, oh, I don't want to tunnel through the snow. Yeah, uh, that was quite funny. The last part of the episode is the caribou migration in the north, which is the largest uh, overland migration in the world. So it's a fitting way to end it, I think. And then we see wolves chasing the caribou. Now that was another bit that's pretty memorable from Planet Earth, uh, where we see the wolves just run down this caribou calf and kill it. Uh, and in this episode, it's almost like a, a one-up, because the caribou gets away in this one. It's not like a particularly epic chase compared to the one in Planet Earth. But it does a good job of, like, you're still on the side of this caribou calf, more because of what happened in Planet Earth, I think. Um, it's a really good way of ending it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I think that caribou, the caribou deserved a win in this one, you know. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It was a pretty good uh, way to end the episode. Uh, I think it also kind of symbolises to me how the difference between Planet Earth and Planet Earth 2. The first Planet Earth is quite uh, bleak in its portrayal of the natural world. Like everything's, nothing's having a great time in Planet Earth. Planet Earth 2 is probably, probably because it's geared to a slightly younger demographic, it's a bit more optimistic. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't feel too fluffy. As I said, the series is quite violent, but uh, it, it definitely goes the whole, let's give some wins for uh, the animals that we like. But after that, we see the making of sequence and it's about the people that filmed in the elephant grass. Uh, and considering we barely got any footage from it, they, they put quite a lot of effort in. I kind of feel bad for the guys because they didn't really use much of it. Like, there was a guy hiding in this little, like, straw. Not even a hut, like a hide. Wait, looking for tigers. And there was really nothing to protect them. They were, like, braving rhinos, buffalo, elephant. Uh, there were sloth bears attacking all their equipment. Like, all their equipment got damaged. It's quite fun. There's, like, a bit of a whodunit thing. I kind of wish they'd used some of the more of that footage. Just because it felt like they went through quite a lot to, to get it. And uh, it didn't really pay off in the end, I don't think. But no, this episode is good. I, it's not as good as Deserts. I think Deserts is still the best one for me. Um, there is a lot in it that I just kind of like. Uh, the lions and the buffalo are brilliant. The harvest moose I really liked. Uh, I mean, I liked the, the caribou stuff at the end, which I remembered liking this one more. This is a little bit disappointing. But no, this episode uh, is still good. Um, yeah, so the next one I will be doing is The Cities, which is the final episode of Planet Earth 2. So, pfft. What am I going to do then? 
Uh, but no, um, if you like this, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, as ever, you don't need to. Uh, it's appreciated, but you don't have to. I'll be doing cities, as I said, next week, and uh, I'll see you then. Goodbye.